All right, guys, we're starting the West Coast Trail on the 7th of July. And so I just thought I would show you what we are going to eat on the West Coast Trail and show you how I pack it. And hopefully it'll actually fit in my food bags. We'll see. So this is seven days worth of food for the trail. We also have one night of food here for when we get to Vancouver and stay at Horseshoe Bay. And then we have one night of food for the camping on the way out. I'll just try and go through everything bit by bit here. These uh, banana bites and these hand fuel nuts, they're gonna go into a bag all together, like a Ziploc. And they are just gonna be ready to go to eat whenever anybody wants some. The rest of the snacks are here. Each kid and each adult is gonna have their own snack bag. So each person has one pepperoni stick. One of these original pepperonis, each person has one. Each person has their own snack bag. So you can see this is Merrick's and I've got them labeled. And I learned a long time ago to keep the snack bag separate because my husband is just an eating machine and he'll literally eat through all the snacks. So there says dad, it's for my husband. Here's his pepperoni. There's Amelia's and this is her pepperoni. So you can see that I don't really care too much about being super healthy anything to just keep them going on the trail. They've got little chocolate bars in there. They've got kind bars, which are a little bit healthier. They've got a couple of bags of beef jerky. I think there's like three bags per person of beef jerky. Each person also has a bag of candy. So this one says Amelia. There's pretzels in there and there's candy. So there's the three bags of snacks and then my snacks is just in a Dyneema zip bag here. I've also got a bag of like extra snacks. You can see that there are some food bars and there's some shot blocks. That really keeps the kids going on the trail. I've got some almond butters and I've got some Zact bars and a few of these for me because I don't actually have any candy. So this is my candy. I can't handle candy. I don't really have a sweet tooth. And these I just eat on trail or I'll eat them um, for lunch and I will show you the lunch. So here's the lunches. That is probably actually gonna be eaten the night on the trail before we leave, that sausage. We might uh, have a fire if the fires are loud, I'm not sure, and cook it on the fire. Either that or we'll just eat it the way it is. I've got peanut butter there. That peanut butter is for me and Amelia. We don't like to always have meat in our little cups here. The kids go through these like crazy. So I've actually got three of these. These are like pitas and they like the little bowl type pitas. Here's a second one, there's a third. I am gluten-free, so I actually have some gluten-free ones. Here they are. These are Casa Bonita, 100% gluten-free, vegan, blue corn pitas. And that's what I'll have. Inside these pitas, we have these tuna packs and Merrick really likes these. So this is like seven days worth of lunches. He loves these pate tuna things. They just squeeze out. We've got two things of cheese to put with the meat in here. We've got some yellow mustard. We're also gonna have some ketchup packs. We're actually gonna go to McDonald's on the way out. All of us are gonna order fries and we're gonna get a whole bunch of ketchup and we'll take that with us. We have these little black diamond combo nut cheese things. There's only three of them. Somebody got into my fridge and stole one. So one of us is not gonna have one of those. <laughs> Probably me, because the mom does the sacrifice. For lunches, we've got some baked potatoes here, loaded baked potatoes. They already kind of have like butter and whatever in them and garlic with bacon bits. The kids absolutely love bacon bits with potatoes on trail because my kids eat quite a bit. They'll get through this stuff here with the meat in probably three, four days. And then after that, it's gonna be baked potatoes for lunch. Here is Itchy Ban. We're probably gonna have that for one of the nights on either end for supper. Here is another supper for the kids for one of the nights on either end. This is KD. And I mean, this is a little bit heavier than backpacking food. So that's two nights for the kids and the husband on either end. And then this is what I'll have instead of Itchy Ban, because I'm gluten-free. This is a little rice noodle soup packet. For breakfast, I've got two oatmeal packets each. So eight packs of this oatmeal, which is one breakfast, will be taken out on the morning we start, which will be the morning of July 7th, because we're gonna have to eat breakfast that morning and have a really good breakfast, because it'll be a really hard um, trail 
the first day. The direction that we're going the first couple days are the hardest days. And also my kids tend to eat just bars the morning that we're hiking out. They don't want to get up and have oatmeal. They just want to have bars and get going because they're always excited to see the car. So we'll need one less breakfast than what's in those packages there. This is just some dried fruit to put in our breakfast. I can't remember what this stuff is called. I will have to just write it on the screen. This is my coffee. This is flash fuel. I'm not gonna take this box, obviously. There's little tiny packs in here. There's enough for one pack every morning in there. And I'm probably gonna to wanna to have a coffee on the trail too. So there's enough in there for a coffee on the trail as well. That's just instant coffee. I've got here our two fuel cans that we're gonna take. These are like the medium fuel cans. We do take two of those for a seven day trip just because we are cooking for four people. I've got here one of our stoves. This is the Asoto Windmaster and it's inside that little packet. These are our long handle sporks. They're titanium, there's four of them there. Spoon, sporks, some of us likes the sporks, some of us just like the spoons. This is just some electrolyte and we're gonna get more. I actually haven't gone to Costco to get the little tiny packets of electrolytes yet so they're not actually on the table here. There's our pots and our mugs and there's our MSR stove. And there is only three mugs there. They're all titanium. We each have a titanium mug. We don't bring any plates or bowls or anything. We just bring our mugs and our stoves. We do bring two stoves because we're cooking for four. It's really hard to get water going for everybody when you only have one pot and one stove. So we take two big pots and a stove. I mean, that's not really that big. I think it's only a liter. So these are our dinners. These are all gonna come out of the packages because there's no way we would be able to fit all of this stuff into our backpacks because Chris and I pretty much have to carry all the food. Actually, we're gonna try and get Amelia to carry her food this year because she's 13 and she's grown and she definitely should be able to carry her food. So we're gonna take all of this food out of the packages and put them into Ziploc bags and these are Ziploc freezer bags. And the Ziploc freezer bags are supposed to be okay to eat out of as long as it's not over the boiling point. So we'll put the food in there, take the boiling water off the stove, let it cool for a second, throw it into the Ziploc bags, and then each of us have one of these. These are just homemade koozies. We put the Ziploc bags into these homemade koozies for the 10, 15 minutes that the freeze-dried food needs to rehydrate. We do have one Hyperlite koozie. I treated myself to that. It was silly expensive compared to these ones that I just made. We've got some cup of soup here. This is for nighttime or if we're hiking in rain or something and people want to just warm up. That's what that's for. And because I'm gluten free, I've got the vegetable cubes. And when those cup of soups run out, the kids can help have the vegetable cubes too. But I'll just kind of go through the food that we have here. We have six nights of food here. We don't get dehydrated food for the kids for every night because they don't like all of the freeze-dried food. They would rather just have these Nor packets. And these are heavier, of course, than the freeze-dried food. So we don't want to have every single night because seven nights of food is quite heavy. We've just got sour cream chives. We do this in one big pot, two of them together. So creamy garlic, sour cream and chives goes pretty good together. We've got the chicken fried rice there and we've got the Parmesan pesto. Merrick doesn't really like tomato sauce. So we have to kind of get everything in white sauce. Amelia's got the shepherd's pie, spaghetti napolitan, and this is uh, the country potato soup with cheddar and chives. She wanted to try that this time. Merrick, who is a lot pickier, has just the Alpenair home style chicken pot pie. Sorry, there's a bit of a glare on these packets. Pasta primavera with grilled chicken and forever young mac and cheese. He loves that stuff. I know that those are double portions, but don't trust that double portion. Most people can actually eat one of those bags that are double portions. I know that the kids are probably not gonna completely finish theirs, which is okay because my husband is a big eater, so he'll just eat the rest. So this is for Chris. He's got teriyaki, chicken, rice, and he's got the chicken pesto pasta, which I hear is really good. Ginger stir fried rice with beef. Here's the cilantro lime rice and beef stew, happy yak, pad thai, happy yak. That stuff's pretty good. 
I have turnip and beef shepherd's pie with green beans and cheddar, chicken teriyaki rice. I read the back of this. It doesn't say it's gluten-free, but I didn't see anything in the ingredients that says there's gluten in there. This is Irish shepherd's pie. I really like this stuff. So I got two packs and I have another shepherd's pie and I'm hoping that that doesn't have gluten in it either. I don't know. I might uh, rethink this. I have a couple more packages of gluten-free stuff. I might grab those instead and then just keep those for our next backpacking trip for Chris. Also, this this Wild Mountain Eats black bean stew. That should be pretty good. I do have a couple packages of this, so I might swap out that uh, shepherd's pie just in case. They were on sale in Okotoks, so I'm hoping that doesn't mean they're terrible. We will try them and I'll let you know. So these are the Ziploc bags that we're going to put everything in. You can see that these are freezer bags, medium ones. They are a lot more compact than those things. And I mean, they don't even pack down very easily to pack out in garbage. So they take up lots of space in your pack because they're so stiff. And uh, they also take up lots of space because they don't pack down very well for garbage and you gotta haul them out. So this is a ton of food. I'm really hoping they're gonna fit in our bags. I've got the bags over here. We don't need to take bear proof containers because they do have them on the trail or they have uh, bear hangs. I've got the extra large bags from Hilltop Packs. I'm hoping they're gonna last because these buckles on the top here, one of my bags actually broke. Let's see, I'll show you the broken one. They sent me a new one, which is awesome, but I still have one with a broken buckle and I'm gonna have to, I don't know, re-sew that buckle or something. Cause I feel bad that, you know, the bag is just not gonna get used again because it's still a good bag, but you can see the buckle there is broken. And I'd like to maybe put like a bigger buckle because these are huge bags that you can fill up with tons of food. But then when you put tons of food in them, they're obviously heavier and those little tiny buckles don't take the weight very well. I did even have a little carabiner across it, but still the buckle was taking a lot of weight and broke. So I'm going to attempt to get a bigger buckle sewed on that one and see if it works better. Hilltop packs, you guys should put a bigger buckle on the bigger bags. On the small bags, it's fine, but the bigger bags obviously take more weight. So that's that for that. I'm going to make sure that I pack all this up now and then I'll show you guys how I label my bags. So I take those instructions that are on the back of the bag, the amount of water and the amount of time it needs and I mark the Ziploc bags that I put it in with a black marker with that just so that I have it. There's everything that's gonna go in our packs. You can see I've still got the meat out because I have to put that in the fridge until we leave. The meat is gonna go in there as well. But I've just got the snacks right now in here. Um, that's just for on the way. But I've got like the kids candy and the kids snacks just in a bag right now because I don't have their backpacks packed yet. When I pack their backpacks, I will do a video on that. But this is the actual food other than the snacks. This is my snacks plus all of the drinks, the coffee, the tea, extra electrolytes, all of the extra snacks they're in there. I'll just uh, open it up here and give you a quick look. I did show you kind of what I had in here in the other video, but I combined this with the other smaller Dyneema bag that I had. You can see there, there's my snacks. I've also combined the extra snacks. There's the noon. I've got a water filter in here, my coffee. My uh, other little coffee packs are in there now, out of the box, and my bars, and I have some flash fuel coffee and some Alpine Start. Threw some extra coffee in there, because knowing me, I'm probably gonna want two coffees a day. So that's what's in there. That's going in my pack. This bigger food bag is going in my pack because Chris is carrying the tent. And this is the lunch bag with all the lunches in it. And this is going in my bag. That is Chris's food bag. And it's got all of the breakfasts in it. So all the oatmeal. And I may end up taking some of this and putting it in there. I still have to weigh them. The tent, I can't remember how much it weighs. It's somewhere between four and six pounds. It's the four-man um, copper spur from Big Agnes. And so he carries that. And so I need to carry that much extra in food. So I'm going to weigh these and let you guys see how much this stuff weighs. Oh, this food bag here, this is all of Amelia's food. Minus her breakfast, because all the breakfasts are in that bag. So that's just her dinners and the extra dinner for the day before we start hiking. Okay, I've got it set to pounds. 
This is lunch. Lunch is usually the heaviest stuff. That is six pounds. Here is my snack bag. That is 3.49 and this is 8.5. So if I'm carrying that, that's eight and a half plus that was 3.49. So basically three and a half, 12 pounds for those two. Plus this was 6.3 pounds. So 18.3 pounds roughly. And this is 6.2. So if the tent is six pounds, that's only 12 pounds. So I'm going to have to move some more food into Chris's bag, which is fine. I can do that. And then Amelia's bag is 4.7 pounds. So pretty light. So if you add all that together, that is quite a bit of food. I'm going to have to go back and look at the video and see how much all that was because it should be about two pounds per person per day, roughly. All right, I think it's like somewhere around midnight already. Time to go to bed. Packing takes a long time for four people for a backpacking trip. And I've only got two more evenings to do it in because I work right up until we leave. So yeah, I will try and make you guys videos of uh, me packing my bag and then packing the kids' bags and show you how we pack them and what's in them. And we will see if Chris will do one, but uh, I wouldn't hold my breath. All right, Alpine Earth out.